To say that I was eager to get started is a real understatement. After eight weeks without sea fishing, I'm trying to set up in double quick time. With being forced to lay off during prime place fishing time, it was pretty much a no-brainer as to where I'd be going. The south coast, Seaford, and my favourite mark, Frankie's. Being the first day back after restrictions were eased, I was expecting the beach to be packed, so I got here early. Much to my surprise, there are only half a dozen anglers already set up, and they were located at the favoured marks of Edinburgh Road and the Buckle. Maybe they knew something I didn't, or maybe it was just too early in the tide. It was still an hour before low water, and maybe others were still trying to source their bait. Not wishing to leave anything to chance, I had dug my own bait, so I had a bucket of prime Essex blow lug, but no ragworm. I normally do well with ragworm here, particularly for soles, and also like to use Welsh blacks. I had some frozen sticky black lug with me, but it's not the same as fresh out. Conditions looked ideal though. As well as my standard place rig that I describe in a shore on video, I've also set up a one up one down flapper with black and green beads. My standby rig for distance, which gets me a lot of fish here, is what I refer to as my two snood sole rig, and I described that in a previous Seaford video. This one has a five ounce breakaway lead, but the other two have either a star lead or a pyramid lead. Whether the white colour makes a difference or not, I don't know, but lack of wires makes it easier to be able to drag your bait. This is sometimes necessary in order to get bites. The flapper rig is for medium range, and the other two are for fishing at distance. I'm grateful for the wind being from behind, since it's at range that I'm expecting to catch most of my fish. The Lincoln top right hand corner is from a previous video at Frankie's. This is also a springtime session and it covers my general approach in some detail. Usually I'd set up much closer to the water's edge, but I don't normally fish it over low water. The tide is still ebbing and I'm not expecting much until about an hour on the flood. And since I've got a bit more gear with me than usual, I don't fancy all that trundling up and down the beach. My other excuse for being lazy is that I'm still worn out from all that bait digging. That's not something I'd normally be doing. I made an exception this time, since I really needed to get back onto this beach, and fresh bait is always a good idea. Although it's a neap tide today, I am surprised about how strong the tidal pull is. The action's a bit slow at the moment, and dragging the bait doesn't seem to be doing anything. Time to make a change. Being extra eager to get my first fish, I decided to give up on my flapper rig and swap over to the two snood sole rig and try and get a bite at distance. So, with a finger stall on, I'll give it a good whack. It's pulling quite hard from right to left, so I'm having to walk up drift before I cast, and walk a little bit further when I'm recasting my second rod.
rod tips are bent quite far round now, which is a bit strange really since it's just approaching the bottom of the tide. And the wind's picked up just a little bit as well. Dead on low water, my tips move round more than I expected, so I wind in and feel a bit of weight on. I didn't see any bite, but at least I'm off the mark. And what's more, it's a quite a nice double shot. Not huge, but they're over the minimum size. And what's more, my target species. Well pleased with that, and I'm back in business. Whilst unhooking these, I noticed that my other rod has drifted further down than it should have. So, winding in, I feel fish on that as well. A double shot of dabs on the sole rig. Really pleased with that. And also really pleased that the worm I dug the other day is to their liking. It now seems that that was well worth the effort. Although I'm pleased with any flatfish, I haven't come here for dabs, so the salt rig has been swapped back over to the two hook flapper. It's the place that I'm after, so I'll give this another go. If it doesn't work, I can always swap back. I have brought some tipping baits with me, a little bit of squid and some razor clam which is what I'm cutting up now. Both rods now have free hook clip down rigs. This one still got the star lead on, but the other one that's out there has got a 6 ounce breakaway. With the tidal pull increasing, the theory is that the rig further updrift has a grip lead and this should hold a little bit better. What I hadn't accounted for though is the May rot and that's now putting a bit of weight onto the line. I now regret bringing my VT rods and should have brought the Gravel Dewey's instead. These are marginally stiffer and could probably handle this a bit better. The weed and gelatine like spheres are falling off the line quite easily though and they're not coming through the top ring. And although I'm not seeing any bites, I am catching place number three, but smaller than the previous two. All the fish so far have been at distance, so clipping down is still vital. I 
I'm now having to walk even further up drift before casting. Except in winter, I wouldn't normally raise my rods here, but the tidal pull is that strong that I'm having even to hang a bag of stones onto the tripod to prevent that from pulling over. It's a couple of hours into the flood now, and the rigs are being dragged quite some distance to my left. Using mono might have been better than Bray today. You could feed out more line, have a big bow in the line, and hopefully your rig would stay out that little bit further out for that little bit longer. I'm now getting the feeling that I don't think my bait's staying out there as far as I would like it to. Maybe I should have brought some 7 ounce leads today. Once again, no indication of a bite, but another wait on. Is it just a may rot, or is it a fish? Can't tell today. Well, it's a slightly better dab. And because I'm not striking at bites, it's quite deep hooked, therefore needing disgorging. Time to move the gear up the beach. A few other anglers have turned up now, but it's by no means busy at all, especially where I am.
one rod is pulled in, rebated, clipped up and placed down onto the rucksack ready to be cast out. I open up the bail arm of a reel on the other rod, feed out line as I'm bringing this up the beach. It's a little bit awkward carrying the tripod with that bag of stones. I eventually get the tripod in the right position. It's now two and a half hours before the top of the tide and more people have turned up on my right but still not busy at all. There's still a strong tidal pull and my rigs are still being dragged to the left. surprised that this hasn't happened already. One rig has got caught up in the line of my other rod. However, there are two more flatfish attached. Fortunately, this is easy to untangle. dab on the upper snood and a small place below. And would you believe it? Two more place have hung themselves on the other rod. Again, nothing big, but at least the flatfish tally is racking up nicely now. Frustrating not being able to see the bites, but fortunately, at least, not all of the fish are deeply hooked. It 
it's now an hour and a half before the top of the tide and I've moved my gear up to the strand line. Now that's more like it, the first bite I've seen today. I find it far more satisfying when you can see something to strike into rather than just waiting for the fish to hook themselves. Lovely fish, and plenty of them now. It's just a pity they're just not sizeable. Three quarters of an hour before the top of the tide, and the tidal pull eases off a bit. I can now lower the rods again. Tidal run then switches direction to go from my left to my right, and the may weed or the may rot becomes a bit of a problem again. At the top of the tide, I'm now having to walk a bit to my left to cast. No fish at the top of the tide, but about 20 minutes down and it's back to all action again. Still not seeing any bites so the fish are just hanging themselves. Quite a few more flatties follow, but one of my cameras packs up, so I'm unable to record that. I did try the sole rig again a couple of times, hoping that I might get a sole, particularly an hour and a half down, which seems to be the prime time for them. However, I would have been a lot more confident in catching one if I had had some small ragworm with me. That seems to be the bait they prefer down here. Well, at least that's what I caught them on last year and I would have had a better chance of catching one if I had stayed right to the time that light started to fade and that would have coincided with halfway down the tide which is another good time to catch them.
I would have loved to have stayed till dark, but I'm pretty much worn out now. And my capture of her writing, I think, is my cue to pack up. All in all, it was great to be back on the beach and a pretty memorable day. 21 place, 8 dabs and that whiting. Only spoiled by the May rot, but nevertheless, still a fantastic day's fishing. It would have been nice to have been able to see the bites, but I suppose we can't have everything. It's just a pleasure to be back fishing again. <laughs>